क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटीन से पोटेंशियल एनर्जी फंक्शन इज डिफाइंड फॉर कंजर्वेटिव फोर्सेस नॉन कंजर्वेटिव फोर्सेस ए ड्रैग बोथ वन एंड टू डियर स्टूडेंट्स इट इज अ फेयरली थियोरेटिकल क्वेश्चन एंड वी मस्ट नो दैट द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एंड पोटेंशियल एनर्जी फंक्शंस आर डिफाइंड फॉर कंजर्वेटिव फोर्सेज ओनली अ वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन एंड द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन शुड बी ऑप्शन नंबर वन आई होप यू डिड दिस क्वेश्चन करेक्टली Now let us proceed to the question number seventeen. Question number seventeen says a uniform rod of mass m and length l is lying on a smooth horizontal table. The work done by external agent in slowly making it stand vertical on one end is. Now, dear students, we have to find out the work done by an external agent in slowly making it stand. Therefore, the work done would be equal to the change in the gravitational potential energy of the rod. The change in gravitational potential energy of the rod can be written as mass of the rod multiplied by g into delta l, where delta l is the vertical displacement of the center of mass of the rod. Since initially the rod is lying horizontally on the table, initially the center of mass is on the ground. However, when the rod is made vertical, the center of mass attains a height l by two. That is the half of the height of the rod. Therefore, the students delta L here would be equal to L by two, and we can write down as m g into L by two is equal to the change in potential energy or the work done, which will be equal to m g into L by two. Dear students, therefore, the correct answer for this very particular question is option number two and. Now let us proceed to the question number eighteen. Question number eighteen says a block of mass m is lying at the bottom of a smooth inclined plane. Forces F one and F two are acting on the block as shown in figure. The block is moved to top of an inclined plane of length x with constant speed. The net work done by forces F one and F two is. Now, dear students, here it has been mentioned that the block is moved with a constant speed. Which means that the change in the kinetic energy of the block would be equal to zero. According to work energy theorem, since work done by all the forces is equal to change in kinetic energy, we can write down that the work done by all forces is equal to zero. Therefore, dear students, the work done by F1 plus the work done by F2 plus the work done by gravity would be equal to zero. Herein, therefore, work done by F1 plus work done by F2. Would be equal to minus of work done by gravity. Dear students, let us therefore try to find out the work done by gravity. On the block, there will be a force of gravity along the incline equal to mg sine theta, which will lead to work done. Please note that the component of gravity perpendicular to the inclined plane would lead to no work as it would be perpendicular to the displacement. The work done by this component would be equal to minus mg. Sine theta into x. We are using a negative sign because the force and the displacement are opposite to each other. On substituting this value in this expression, we get the work done by F1 plus work done by F2 is equal to mg sine theta into x. Here theta is equal to 30 degree. If and if we substitute the value, we get that the work done by F1 and F2 combined would be equal to mg. X by two. Now, dear students, herein h is equal to x sine thirty. That is x by two, and therefore the required work is equal to mg into h, which makes the option number three of this particular question as the correct answer. Now, dear students, let us proceed to the next question, which is question number nineteen. Question number nineteen says a force F acting on a body depends on its displacement as F is proportional to s to the power minus one by three. The instantaneous power delivered by the force will depend on displacement as. Now, dear students, the power can be written as F into v. Therefore, let us proceed and find out the expression of v in terms of s. As per the question, we can write down that F is equal to K multiplied by s to the power minus one by three, where k is a constant. Force can be written to be equal to m v dv by d s 
which is equal to k s to the power minus 1 by 3. The students, we can proceed further and write that v dv will be equal to k by m s to the power minus 1 by 3 ds and we can proceed and integrate it. On integrating dear students, we find out that v square by 2 would be equal to 3 by 2 k by m s to the power 2 by 3 or in other words v would be equal to under root of 3k by m s to the power 1 by 3. Now since power is equal to force multiplied by velocity on substituting the value of force as k into s to the power minus 1 by 3 and the value of v as under root 3k by m s to the power 1 by 3 we get the power as under root of 3 k by m multiplied by k which is a constant and therefore the power is independent of displacement or f is proportional to s to the power 0 and therefore dear students the option number 3 of this particular question is our correct answer now let us proceed to the question number 20 Question number 20 says the kinetic energy K of a particle moving in a straight line depends on distance S as K is equal to A square. The force acting on the particle is. Dear students, we must know that force is equal to the gradient of kinetic energy that is dK by dS. On substituting the value of K, we have to find out the differentiation of A S square with respect to S which will be equal to 2As and therefore dear students the force is equal to 2As and the correct answer for this a relatively easier question is option number 1. Now let us proceed to the next question of the test which is question number 21. 